Hello and welcome to TFL Off-Road. In today's video, it's first dirt in my new 2021 Jeep Wrangler Willy Sport. Let's talk about this Jeep. I purchased this Jeep just a couple weeks ago. It's a 2021 Wrangler. I ordered it a few months ago because I had a small budget and Jeeps are expensive. Now this one, as you see, it came in at about $33,000. I paid $31,800 for it, and that is pretty affordable in terms of Wranglers. Now typically in this channel, we review Rubicons because that's what they put in the fleet. But I couldn't afford a Rubicon because they're like mid $40,000 starting. So we're going to see how the Willys Sport does off-road. Now, Dad, I used to make fun of folks who said, um, oh, I just bought this new Jeep and it was expensive and I don't want to scratch it and break it off-road. I never understood that. And now that I've just spent $35,000 with tax on a new Wrangler, I totally understand that sentiment. Yeah, you know, the first pinstripe's the most painful, <laughs> but once you get past that, it becomes much more enjoyable because, look, these things are meant to be used, right? Yeah, I know. It's just, it's just like, well, oh, I don't want to break it. But the trail we're doing today is called Webster Pass. It is rocky and loose and a classic Jeep trail, but nothing out here should uh, take out a quarter panel or rip off a fender. The Willy Sport is a really cool option. You see, this at its core is still the very basic stripped down Wrangler. This thing has got manual windows, manual mirrors, no power locks, and a plastic steering wheel. It's as base as you can get. But the Willys package, which is a $2,000 option, gives you these really cool alloy wheels with the BFG KM2 tires. It gives you HD Rubicon suspension, a limited slip rear diff, and these rock rails. So it's kind of a hell of a deal for $2,000. It's kind of the ultimate everyman off-roader. Yeah, we did air down, uh, which is necessary in this two-door, right? The shorter the wheelbase, the rougher the ride. Let's be, let's be real about that. But it also makes it much more manageable. You know, there's something about um, taking a small vehicle off-road that's so much nicer and easier than taking a big vehicle. If you guys are interested, we just took the TRX up the same trail, uh, and it was a much more daunting proposition. Can you watch the right side, Dad? Yeah, I don't, I don't need help on the left. Yeah, it was just more of a handful. The thing about the Wrangler is, it's a good and a bad thing. It's a very narrow vehicle. You know, you sit pretty close to the person next to you, which is something that a lot of folks don't like, especially for road trips. But out here in Colorado, the difference of a couple of inches in width can be the difference of spending a few hundred dollars to get your paint corrected, you know, after you get off the trail or, you know, hurting some trees, which is never a good thing. So that's why I love off-roading in, especially the Tudor Wranglers, because they're just so maneuverable and the breakover angle is so good. So what's the drive like, a Wrangler? It's very good. Yeah? Yes, it's very much at home off-road. There's something just super satisfying and it's almost hard to explain about having the front solid axle articulate over the rocks and over the boulders. It just feels right. I mean, you never lift tires in a Wrangler obviously if you're doing some pretty extreme stuff you can lift one occasionally but it's such a planted feeling and not to say that the forerunner of the new Bronco isn't planted but it's an entirely different sensation and an IFS setup is much better on-road in 99% of situations but when you're doing this kind of slow rock crawling something so satisfying about feeling that front solid axle articulate over the stones now I did not option this Wrangler with the hard top I couldn't afford it, so I just got the soft top, the base model option. But that's actually a great thing because it means you can do stuff oh, like this, where with just two latches, you fold it back, and now we've got fun in the sun off-road adventure time. 
Now, of course, this is a two-door Wrangler, which is the most affordable type of Wrangler you can get. It has the base model powertrain and transmission, a six-speed manual transmission with a standard four-wheel drive system, two high, four high, and four low. I did splurge for one other option, air conditioning, $1,300, but it has been well worth it in Colorado now that we're hitting the 100 degree temps. And then look at this, look at that little itty bitty tiny screen. That's the basic Uconnect 5-inch screen, and it's got the world's smallest backup camera. Now, Tommy, our viewers might be wondering, how can you tell a Willys from just an everyday Wrangler? Well, it's very simple, right there. Grill is blacked out. It's kind of got a raccoon look to it. But from a TFL perspective, it's kind of TFL colors. The manual transmission is good. Now, as some of you pointed in my first video, um, you know, for the ultimate and off-road ability, the automatic transmission will be better. It's just easier and it's, um, you know, quite a bit more convenient when you're trying to negotiate tight. Yeah, but when you had your JK, that was also manual. And uh, once you get used to a manual off-road, yeah, you know, when you're, okay, when you're like in a group of Jeeps, it's a lot harder to use, right? Because the Jeep in front of you stops, so you gotta stop. And then, you know, it's kind of a stop-start thing. That's a pain in the ass in a manual. But when you're out here by yourself on the trail, the manual doesn't actually make it any worse. It makes it a little worse you in, think? in yeah. really aggressive situations, yeah. But I think it's more fun. It adds another level of complexity. And I find that for this kind of slow speed trail running, second gear in low range is the way to go. Know that this vehicle has a 345 rear axle ratio, which is pretty tame. I would like to have a 373 option. But for the stock tires, this axle ratio is perfect. I don't think I'd be super happy with like 35s on here. I'm not sure it has the gearing for that. But on these stock 32s, it feels just right. Uh, so we're coming up to a little part here where you can test this Jeep uh, off-road ability and we'll do that. I'll get out and I'll shoot you and you can kind of uh, demonstrate just how good it is because it does get a little bit rock crawly. You ready to do that? Yep, for sure. Here we've got a loose and rocky hill climb. It's going to look like a driveway and camera guaranteed, but it's actually quite a little challenge here. Now obviously this model is not the Rubicon, but to be honest, the performance envelope on the Rubicon is so high that I don't even think even in my more off-road trails in Colorado, I would need the front and the rear locking differential. Any Wrangler, especially a two-door, is so capable because of its lightweight factor, the solid axles, the low-range gearing. So here we go, up this uh, pretty gnarly little, little hill. It does have something called brake lock differential where it'll break the spinning wheel and send power to the wheel with traction. Whoa. And it also has a limited slip diff, which I'm gonna need right about here. Come on, come on. Come on, Jeep. Well, apparently maybe I do need the locking diffs. I just said I don't need them. Come on, limited slip. Let's limit some slip here. There we go. Just a little bit of momentum is all it took. So the limited slip is pretty good, but it is, uh, still a limited slip it's it's not a true locker i would love if you could spec a willies with an actual locking diff now this is where i was really sweating in the trx but in the wrangler i feel better because i have a lot more options in terms of line in a full-size truck you're pretty much just relegated to you know where you can go down the trail without scraping it whereas in the wrangler I can be a little bit more precise on how i want to uh position my wheels, which is always pretty cool. Okay, no hill descent control, of course, with the manual transmission, um, but that's fine with me, because my hill descent is uh, modulating the clutch and the brakes, and I always think that's a better way to do it anyways. Well, we made it up that little hill climb scramble there. Um, it wasn't quite as limited slip as I was hoping, but with a little bit of throttle, um, the system kind of kicked into life and we scrambled our way up, which is a good thing about having extra clearance and skip plates and the like. So now we're going all the way up there to 12,000 feet in between the saddle and the mountain, which is where you're supposed to stop and we'll close it up up there. All right, let's uh, fly the drone and get some beauty Colorado <laughs> shots. We'll fly the drone. Yeah, 
it was a fun day out on the trail. We're up here at 12,000 feet, and now I'm quite cold and windswept. But as always, check out tflofferoad.com for the latest and greatest in Willie's Jeep Reviews.